Brian, welcome to the show, where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have Judson Brandeis. He is a urologist and sexual medicine expert, and he wrote the Kevin MD article, The Catastrophe of Men's Health and How We Can Help. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Kevin, for having me. I appreciate it. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and journey to where you are today? Sure. So I, you know, I started out at Brown University. I was a history major, but I always wanted to go to medical school. I went to Vanderbilt Medical School after doing a year of research at American Red Cross for Harold T. Merriman, the guy who figured out how to freeze blood. Mm -hmm. And then from Vanderbilt, I went to Harvard, did a research fellowship in the Merrill and Murray lab where they did the first living related kidney transplant sponsored by Howard Hughes Medical Research Institute. And then off to UCLA where I did two years of surgery and four years of urology. And then from there, I went off to Walnut Creek, California where I, I went in straight into private practice in general urology, but I was fortunate to be at the birth of surgical robotics. So my hospital had the second Da Vinci surgical robot, and I really helped pioneer surgical robotics, especially in urology. And then I've always been sort of an early adapter of technology. So I was one of the first private practice doctors to do MRI guided prostate biopsies. And then about three years ago, I discovered new technologies in sexual medicine, including low intensity shockwave therapy, platelet-rich plasma. And so I branched off into sexual medicine and now more into total male rejuvenation, including using high-intensity focused electromagnetic waves to build muscle, bioidentical hormones. And I'm doing a lot of clinical research and device development. And most recently, I wrote the book, The 21st Century Man, which really is the most complete and medically accurate book on men's health, over 101 chapters, 900 pages, and 60 co-authors. So that's me in a nutshell. Tell us a little bit about your practice, about some of the patients that you see, some of the cases that, that you handle. Yeah. So I, you know, I have an absolutely amazing practice. I stopped taking medical insurance about three years ago and I spend an enormous amount of time with my patients. So a new patient consult is about an hour and we go into every aspect of a man's health because what really I discovered was to adequately treat someone's physical intimacy issues, you have to understand the whole picture. You know, sleep apnea can affect erectile dysfunction or testosterone can affect erectile dysfunction or obesity or lack of exercise or relationship issues. And that's was sort of the genesis of the 21st century man was let's find out every aspect of a man's health that can affect his sexual function. And then let's write about it. So I have men that, you know, I've been blessed to have great geographic location. So I'm close enough to Apple, Google, Facebook, mm -hmm. Lawrence Livermore Labs, Oracle to have really fascinating patients that come in and they come in because typically they have erectile dysfunction, but what's leading to erectile dysfunction maybe is obesity or uh, poor diet or smoking, or sometimes it's just old age. And we're able to help them with some of these regenerative technologies and get them back to be able to be physically intimate with their partner. And to be honest, I've cured plenty of men with prostate cancer, bladder cancer, kidney cancer, taking out kidney stones. It's the most rewarding thing to have a guy come in after a month or two of working on them and having them tell you some great story about what happened over the weekend with their spouse. So in primary care, when someone comes in with erectile dysfunction issues, typically they leave with a prescription of Viagra, Levitra, Cialis. You're certainly on the cutting edge. You talk about regenerative technology. So talk more about some of the techniques that you're using. Yeah. So I have an algorithm that I really use. And first of all, what a lot of people forget about is nitric oxide boosters. You know, nitric oxide boosters is supplements that can have an amazing impact on circulation. And so I started a company called Affirm Science, where we have a supplement called Affirm that I give to men. And it, it's mostly citrulline, which is from watermelon and nitrates, which is from beets. And that decreases blood pressure, increases cognition, increases athletic performance and improves erectile function. And then I use PDE5 inhibitors fairly liberally, especially daily dose to dalafil, and especially taking it before you go to sleep because nighttime erections is really the way that we improve and maintain erectile function. And so if you lose nighttime erections, 
then you uh, will much more quickly lose the ability to get an erection. And then I'm one of the pioneers of low intensity shockwave therapy for uh, erectile dysfunction. And this relatively simple treatment with absolutely no side effects has been shown to improve the what's called the SHIM score, which is the validated questionnaire that we use to assess erectile function by about five points. So if I have a 53-year-old guy with erectile dysfunction that does fine with Viagra, I'm usually actually able to get them off Viagra. If I have someone in their mid-60s that Viagra is not working so well anymore, I can get them to the point where Viagra works pretty well. And if I have someone in their 70s that Viagra doesn't work anymore, I can get them to the point where Viagra is working okay. And then I combine that with something like PRP, platelet-rich plasma injections, which you know we use for hair growth, we use in orthopedics, we use in dentistry, but we're beginning to use in regenerative uh, urology or the ability to improve erectile function. And then I have a whole host of other things that I use, including peptides like primalanotide or oxytocin, apomorphine. We use uh, penis pumps to help rejuvenate the penis. So in the book, the 21st century man, I have a whole algorithm that I lay out that would be great for primary care physicians to read and, and understand on how we can turn back the clock for men. All right, let's talk more about that article. He wrote in Kevin MD, it's titled The Catastrophe of Men's Health and How We Can Help. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it? Absolutely. So men's health is a catastrophe, and I see that every day. And so just a few tidbits of information. A hundred years ago, women lived a year longer than men. Now women live five years longer than men. And the longevity, and most of us know this, but the longevity of Caucasian men in the United States is actually declining. And that was going on even before COVID. And that's because of alcoholism, opioid abuse, and suicide. And men are half as likely to go to the doctor, especially their primary care physician, as women. So we have to help men access the healthcare system. And I think it comes really from women who have babies, right? So they already have an obstetrician or gynecologist and they're used to going there. And probably more women take their kids to the pediatrician than men. So they at least know where the health insurance card is. I mean, I have patients that are PhDs in physics at the Lawrence Livermore lab that don't even know whether they have a, an HMO or a PPO. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it's getting. So what are some of the solutions and what are some avenues that we have to improve men's health or men's access to health? Yeah. So, you know, first of all, doing something like you're doing, Kevin, of providing really good information to men at places that people access information. You know, we've, as physicians, I was present during, you know, the last 25 years when we basically lost the, the battle for healthcare economics mm -hmm. and power in medicine. You know, there's always a slide that's put up at, at a lot of medical meetings that show an increase in the number of physicians over the past 20 years. And it's increased by about 10%. And then an increase in the number of healthcare administrators over the past 10 or 20 years. And that's increased 2000%, right? So we've allowed this whole class of people to come in to sit there and tell us what to do, even though they don't have the same training that we do. And we've lost control of healthcare economics. And guess what? We're losing control of the dissemination of healthcare information. And it's because we expect patients to read little brochures that we give them or books, so on and so forth. And really the issue is we're not on Facebook. We're not on Instagram. We're not on YouTube. And even when we are, we're not providing really entertaining content. I mean, let's just be honest. People, like I watch the Today Show every morning and the, it's just this flash of image after image after mm -hmm. image. And that's what people are used to. And so if you're a physician and you're sitting there droning on and on like I'm doing right now, people aren't going to be that interested in you. So you have to provide information to patients, especially men, in the way that people take in information these days. And so I've actually experimented with YouTube videos, which are one minute videos. You have to kind of make them funny. Mm -hmm. But we have to be creative as physicians and as smart people in meeting our patients where they're going for information. Well, that's so well said. I think that I've been 
talking about this for years about a lot of patients or the majority of patients get their health information on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And if physicians aren't there, they're going to get their information from pseudo practitioners, from politicians, from people who aren't necessarily physicians. So it's more imperative than ever, especially now in the age of COVID for more of us to, to be online. And like you said, be where patients are. Now, let's say we bring men into the exam room and I'm a primary care physician. What are some of the questions we should be asking them to uncover perhaps unexpected things about their health? You know, Kevin, the most important question I think I ask men, especially men over 50, the question that really throws every man for a loop is what do you do for fun? I get a, at least a man a week starting to, to tear up in my office. Right. I, I teach my, my, my patients, first of all, how to come to the doctor's office. And I make videos that we send to patients to prepare them to come to my office. I tell them, write down your medical history, bring in a list of medications, bring in a list of your imaging studies, write down a history of present illness, write down a list of questions for me so that when my patients walk into the office, they hand me a, a sheaf of paper and then I use uh, Dragon. I've been using Dragon for 15 years, 20 years, and I just dictate it. And then I have a lot of time with my patients to talk about all the issues that they want to talk about. And I mean, the Harvard Longevity study showed the most important factor in health is the quality of your relationships. Now, you don't go to the cardiologist to talk about the quality of your relationships, but if you're not talking about the important issues in somebody's life, you're missing the bigger picture. So other than erectile dysfunction, relationships, what are some other men's issues that you see in the exam room that also could be applicable in a primary care setting? You know, so one piece of technology that I have is an in-body body composition analysis machine. And that gives men a percentage of body fat. It mm -hmm. gives them their basal metabolic rate. It gives them what their strength is in their arms, their legs, their trunk. And men respond to numbers. It's mm -hmm. really absolutely amazing. I don't have any training in weight loss and very little training in muscle building other than I was a, you know, a competitive athlete. And I have just astonishing results in building muscle and having men lose weight. And it's it's really a lot of it is attributed to going over an in-body body composition analysis and explaining to men how you lose weight, that one pound of fat is 3,500 calories, that, you know, weight fat is really hard to lose because our body is, you know, desperately clings onto fat because it's, it's fuel. Explaining what alcohol actually is, that alcohol is uh, empty calories, it's a depressant, it's, uh, it disinhibits you. I mean, you really have to explain the macro of what people are doing and, and then allow men to follow their numbers. Mm -hmm. Giving men quantifiable numbers to follow, I think, has made an enormous impact in how my patients... I have a whole series of men I'm actually going to send to a journal to get published between the ages of 60 and 70 and over a period of about four months using my male rejuvenation protocol, I have men in their 60s building five to 10 pounds of muscle and losing 10 to 20 pounds of fat over four months, men in their 60s. It's really, it's just astonishing what men can do when you provide them with the proper information and ta really take the time to, to explain the path that they can get better. We're talking to Judson Brandeis. He's a urologist and sexual medicine expert. He wrote the Kevin MD article, The Catastrophe of Men's Health and How We Can Help. Judson, a lot of primary care physicians, we don't have an hour to spend in the exam room with patients. We have 10 to 15 minutes. And as you can imagine, all these check boxes on electronic medical records and regulations and forms that we have to fill. In that limited period of time, what are some of the highest impact advice you could give the primary care doctors? You did recommend a question. What do you like to do to have fun? What other tips do you have for primary care doctors to improve their male patient's health? Yeah, I, you know, be like you, Kevin, make videos. Mm -hmm. 
I have a male sexual health curriculum on my YouTube channel. It's two hours of videos that I made. You know, these days it's easy to make a video. Everyone's got an iPhone. iPhone's got 4K video. You know, you have a little app that's a teleprompter app and you just have someone in your office or use a gimbal and make videos and explain this stuff. You know, this is, this is how I explain diabetes. This is how I explain heart disease because you need an extender. I mean, let's be honest. 20, 25 years ago, we got paid a lot more money than we do now. I mean, it's the same dollars, but medical cost of inflation is 4% per year. So every year, the government or, or somebody's taking 4% from you per year. So you're making a fraction of what you were making 20 years ago. And mm -hmm. so what we did was just cram more patients in the day, but at a certain point, you can't cram any more patients in the day. And then, like you said, you got all these rules and regulations and electronic medical record. And so you need to be able to extend yourself in some way. And I found that way. I asked my patients, watch my two hours of video on men's sexual health before you even come in. And then when you come in, we can have a higher level of conversation and you write your history of present illness, you write your questions for me, let's make the most efficient use of the time that you have. I don't want to spend half the time that I'm with you explaining stuff that you could learn, you know, at home. And my final question, what are some of your take home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? Yeah, the take home messages are that sexual health really matters. The quality of relationships that your patients have really matter. That men's health really is a catastrophe. Men are living less long, even before COVID, men are living less long. And you really have to delve into getting your male patients to trust you and to use you as a resource and really provide high quality information for men on the internet and other places where they access information. And, you know, that's the reason that I wrote The 21st Century of Man, which is the most comprehensive and medically accurate book ever written for men's health. It's over 900 pages and 101 chapters, you know, and that would be a resource that would be fantastic for primary care physicians to hand to their patients. You know, we have cardiologists writing chapters on cardiology, hand surgeons, and pulmonologists, vascular surgeons, urologists, andrologists, you name it, over 60 medical experts providing top tier information. And that's really the name of the game these days is we need to be the influencers for our patients. Don't let the, the internet trolls be the information. Thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Hey, thanks a lot, Kevin. I really appreciate it.